Hello and welcome to another Final Fluid tutorial video. In this video, we will discuss how to use texture maps to control fire and smoke effects. Please keep in mind that this recording is unscripted and everything is done on one and the same PC. Modeling, animation, real-time playback, all is done on the same machine. So we have a simple box in here in this 3 Studio Max scene. And I'm just going to create a final fluid domain or main grid. So that is actually our volume where everything happens. Final fluid is a sparse grid, so it really doesn't matter that much how big we make this volume. But uh, it's always a good idea to have uh, it restricted. So uh, that in the worst case, when it expands too much, we can be sure it everything is happening within this volume. Now that the grid is set up and done, we need to make sure that we can emit fire and smoke from our object here, the box. So for that to happen, we need to make the box somehow as an emitter. Right now we have no emitters at all, so we create a fluid emitter and we'll just click it into the scene. And we have this little cube here indicating that this is our emitter. And we'll make sure it's an STF sign distance field and we'll pick the box, the mesh is our emitter. And I'll just make sure we go back to the default settings here. So that's all default right now what we have here. So when you follow with the tutorial, you will end up exactly the same way as I end up here. So now let me pick the grid again and preview. Still, we don't see any flames, any fire or smoke because we did not pick the emitter. Keep in mind, every grid can have its own emitters. So you can have multiple grids in a scene and multiple emitters and each emitter can be in its own grid. So here we go. Now we have the box emitting fire and smoke and it's a default setting. So right now we don't care about the look and effect. Just have a look around. So everything is emitting here right from the box as we want it. So the next thing we might want to check is our box object. We want to make sure that we now control the fire where it's emitting the fire on the box with the texture map. As usual, all settings are done in the fluid emitter like temperature, smoke, fuel, including the map control. But now let's just assign a texture map. So we have a standard physical material applied to the box and I'll just pick a checker map. So let me just make sure we turn tile off so we don't want to have tiling. And that's our checker map we want to use to control the fire or where the fire should appear. So let me select the grid and preview. And as we can see, still the whole box is emitting fire. So we are missing something. Let's have a look what we are missing. So for that, we go back to the fluid emitter. I'll select that and have a look at the fluid emitter. And there's this map slot, this material map slot. And we need to drag and drop our texture map we want to use to control the fire and smoke emitters on our surface. So we'll drag and drop it. Make sure it's an instance. So now it's connected and I'll have a material on the object as well so we can see the map on our object and the map that is actually used for creating the images. However, you can have a totally different material. You don't have to make the map visible on your object. So, and there we go. Now we have on the white areas in the checkerboard, we emit the fire and on the dark areas on the black, we don't emit fire. So that's our threshold we had in the texture map in the emitters controls. And as you adjust everything in 3D Studio Max as normal, it's a standard texture map. So you can tile it, you can do all kinds of manipulation. And that's really powerful and great and easy. So let me, for example, just take this bitmap. It's a standard bitmap, nothing fancy, just our logo or 
text, uh, text and we'll just apply it to the same slot. So I'll just drag and drop it here, also instance it. And now we see that's our final fluid text. And now when we play back, it doesn't work. The checker texture map did work. So something is missing again, but we didn't change anything except the texture map. However, the texture is very fine detail, very small detail. And in our fluid emitter, we have the SDF, the sign distance field resolution set to 16, which is very rough and not really fine detailed. So let's just go back and have a look there. We can see some tiny spots, flames showing up and smoke. So our resolution is still not catching everything. And you can see how much voxels we create and we still can't catch these these pixels, these fine pixels. So I'll increase it to 64 and we can see, okay, there's more fire and flames going on. And now let's even make, make it even finer. And there we go. That's what we want. Our logo or text is showing up as flames right now. And that's the beauty of it. Everything is in real time. We can keep the real time open and adjust every single detail of our flame and fire effect in here in 3D Studio Max. So now let's do some other manipulations because that's just a standard bitmap or texture map. You can do all kinds of stuff. You can move it around. You can move it up and down. All these translations, all these manipulations you have in 3D Studio Max are also working with our fire. Let me just bring back our real-time viewport. It's much more fun with the real-time viewport. So when we rotate here, we get the real-time feedback of the rotation of our bitmap. And we can do even really complex, fancy stuff as well. So don't be afraid to try all kinds of crazy things or ideas. Let's do, for example, a mix map. So we're adding here right now in real time. You can see it's still simulating in real time. I'm swapping out now the texture map and I'll make sure we blend between dark and the final fluid map. And I'll use a gradient ramp to control the blending. And you saw instantly the last part of our letter of our text disappeared. And that's because it fades into black. Now we can use our gradient to control which letters we want to reveal and burn in flames. So let me just move that over here and fade and blend much more over to the full blend. As we can see in the 3 d Max viewport, it shows us exactly which letters will be burning on our surface. And the great thing here is that's all basic standard 3 d Max tools. So we can do all the gradients, all the textures, whatever we dream of. As long as it's a standard 3 d Max texture, we can control our fire and smoke effects. And you see it in real time in the viewport. And how about if we set some keyframes? Because the gradient ramp can be animated with keyframes. So we can do a reveal. So let's start there. And let's just go to frame 250. Yeah, 250. And activate the auto key so that we set some keyframes. And I'll just move the gradient to the right. All right, and this one as well. And let me just pick this one here and move it a little bit further so that our fluid looks good. So now we have these keyframes. And if we were to just drag and move the time slider around, we will see the reveal of our text. And when we preview that, we see, okay, it's previewing. And if I uh, drag the frame slider, it will update our real-time viewport. 
but it will not update the animation. That's because for every frame we need to generate an STF field. So even uh, the play button would take a long time to create this high resolution assigned distance field. So what we are going to do is just press the cache button and this will cache out just the animation parts of our fluid simulation. So it's not the full fluid simulation, just the animated part. So that's the texture map and the SDF field. And now when we press the preview button, we will get our animation in real time. And now we can go back and work on our fire and smoke effect. Now we can use all the tools available we have in Final Fluid. So now that we set, have set up the animation in 3D Studio Max, we can concentrate on the fire effect. So I can reduce burn per temperature so we get more unburned gas in our simulation and we can increase the amount of fuel we have so we get bigger flames, bigger puffs, all the stuff, all the great tools we have in Final Fluid we can adjust in real time. And still everything here is working within the animation. You can see it's building up and we can now really dial in our real time fire and smoke effect. So a very powerful, very simple, easy tool, but still it is powerful. Just use textures to decide where the flames and fire images will be on our surface. So this concludes our, our short uh, tutorial video. I hope you enjoyed this video and check out our other videos as well. And uh, make sure you get the free version of Final Fluid, the public beta version that allows you to create these, all these amazing effects. Thanks again for watching the video. See you then. Goodbye.